Hello, good morning. This is Bud Wheeler from Allison Competition Engines, otherwise known as Ace Allison's in Latrobe, Pennsylvania. We just thought we would give you a walk around uh, show and tell of our test stand for our testing our Allison engines for our clients. Um, we do these for aviation, for our aircraft. Um, so just giving you, we're going to go out to our test site and run the engine here after a little bit, but just a quiet walk around here while we're in the shop. This is our instrument panel. This is the mixture control here. For whatever anybody doesn't understand about aircraft engines, you can fast forward. But just for the people that really want to know more about a test stand in relationship to the engine, this is the mixture control. You move it from idle cutoff to auto lean to auto rich. This is the actual throttle. This instrument panel is, is just sort of a generic panel for all the different type of Allison engines that we run, but primarily you have induction air temperature, that's the air that's going into the actual engine, not the ambient air that, that's going into the engine. We have two of those, but we're going to only use one. We have coolant temperature because this is a liquid cooled engine, it'd be like your car, uh, where you have antifreeze. That's the temperature of the coolant. This is the RPMs of the engine. If you notice that maximum RPMs is 3,000 and you think that's not very many, it's because it's such a big engine. Uh, 1,710 cubic inches doesn't turn that fast. Uh, here's the oil pressure of the engine. Here's the manifold pressure because it is a supercharged engine. You'll see that th the, where it is right now is in sea level pressure or the pressure that we're at a barometric pressure and it'll go all the way up to 60 inches where the supercharger is pumping. You have your oil inlet temperature and your oil outlet temperature. I think many many test stands don't have oil outlet temperature. They have no relationship to knowing what that possibly may be so this will give you an introduction into how much the temperature of the oil is that drops out of the engine once it's used and recycled back through the oil coolers and the oil tank. This is a magnahalic gauge. It measures crankcase pressure, which tells you how good the rings are sailing in the engine. Every mark on here is two inches of water. It takes 28 inches of water to make one pound to give you a relationship. Over here is just gearbox temperature. This is the gearbox on the test stand, so it's, um, it's not much in relationship. Down here is our fuel flow meter that will tell you how many gallons per hour. It's rated in gallons per hour of fuel consumption. Um, all the rest of these switches are just for hydraulic pumps, etc. Master switches for the 24 volts for the system. Uh, but anyhow, uh, you'll get to see this later on as we go out and test. Okay, just uh, to do a walk around on the test stand, uh, we, I would like to tell you that we built this test stand uh, overnight and that uh, it was something that uh, the first time we used it it turned out perfect and the, but the answer is that it, that's not accurate whatsoever. Um, it has been a uh, 20 plus year project of, of building things. Uh, okay that didn't work so hot let's go back and redo that but at this point after 20 years we have this really nailed down to where it's a super functional for testing the Allison engine, but to give you some oversight on what, what some of the things we're looking at here, this is a globe valve that controls the temperature of the oil. We try to keep the oil at what Allison wanted it to be at uh, 83 degrees centigrade, um, and what that does is that's, that's a, a standard so that it oils at 83 degrees centigrade and we look at the relationship of the oil pressure. If the oil pressure is too low, at that particular setting then we have to either jack the pressure up or we have something internally about the engine that's uh, not up to speed. Moving along, uh, of course this is the carburetor for the engine. Anybody that is all familiar with an Allison engine you can again fast forward through this. Carburetor, generator, starter. These are boost pumps and, and uh, solenoids to start the engine. Moreover than anything else, down here are the oil filters. These are filters for the oil that is being scavenged out of the engine. The engine is a dry sump engine where the oil is pumped out of the engine. 
and sent through these fine filters. There's a filter here, another filter here. We have, uh, they're instrumented where if, if they sense any debris in them, they trigger lights on the instrument panel. Everything on the test stand is digital uh, through race pack, digital instrumentation and analog, which is what you know the dashboard up there is. We also have computers that give you the, uh, all the same information, only digitally. Okay, these are the digital exhaust gas temperature uh, probes. We are able to monitor each cylinder via uh, uh, our computers in our trailer. Uh, everything on the engine is, is downloaded both analog on the instrument panel and digitally you know, on the computers. So we're able to actually log what it is that's going on and give it to the customer in real time or uh, or just do a video of the engine for them. But these are the exhaust gas temperatures. Just for the record, it's a 12 cylinder engine, it's not 24. Each cylinder has two exhaust ports. That's why you see all these stacks. All right, just to give you an idea here, uh, we have on the Allison engine what's called an E nose versus the propeller gearbox, which is called an extension shaft nose. It would be typically used in the P39. P63, but we, we instrument our dyno with that on for, so that we can measure the horsepower. This drive shaft goes into what's uh, called a torque transducer. This instrumentation goes to our computers and it tells us the RPM of the engine, the torque, and the horsepower. It converts the torque and the RPMs to uh, horsepower through the computer. This is the gearbox that is proprietary to our dyno that we've worked on so long so hard that takes the speed of the engine and then goes back to a J79 compressor. One other thing that you know the gearbox here this is all pretty complicated in here with scavenge pumps and pumps but this is the uh, recovery tank you know that feeds the oil to the gearboxes via spray bar oil and scavenge recovery and also provides the oil and the scavenging for the turbine and the bearings in it. Uh, so that's what, that's a, the dry sump uh, tank for that. This is the J79 uh, compressor. This is just strictly the compressor from the, from the jet engine. Uh, the neat feature about the J79 in relationship to what we do, it works like a propeller. We can actually change the pitch of the blades inside the turbine via these, these hydraulic rams and, uh, adjust, and it works just like a propeller, uh, the, the pitch on a propeller. We can load the engine or unload the engine, depends on what our desires are. We take the air because the air comes in from this end back here and comes forward through the turbine and gets accumulated in this tank and then goes upward rather than that hot air blowing on us or the engine while we're running. Okay, here we are at the back of the, the uh, dyno or the test stand. This is the coolant radiator because this is a liquid cooled uh, engine just like you would have in your car. A lot of people think that aircraft engines are strictly air cooled. Uh, this is during World War II and this was a liquid cooled engine. So this is the coolant radiator. This is the oil cooler for the engine. This over here is an oil cooler for the test stand, all the gears in the, in the gearbox, all the bearings in the turbine, and it comes through here. And this is all pulled in, the air, the air is pulled in through the turbine, you know, via this manifold back here that we've made for it. Okay, here we are on the left-hand side of the test stand, uh, the dyno, and this is the same thing as the unit previously spoke about up front, another globe valve that controls the temperature of the engine consistently. We like to run between 100 and 100 degrees centigrade, but we can adjust it for whatever the customer wants to see his engine run at, all the way up to operating temperature of a maximum 121 degrees centigrade. Uh, again, the side of the turbine where all the guide vanes. Down here on the bottom is, you know, lots of pumps uh, to control all the various pumping and scavenging and, and controlling of the guide vanes 
and of course you know the manifold in the back here that's the coolant tank that's the reservoir for the coolant tank for the engine okay here we are on the left hand side up by the engine again EGTs for each individual cylinder um, as we go forward this is the box here that collects all the uh, all the wires and whatnot to this box that has the voltage controls and reverse current relays etc in there we have just a couple cables that we plug into the front from the instrument panel to this box we're able to you move these these plugs around on the back for whatever different plugs and pickups that we need for various engines on the engine this is to provide air to cool the generator uh, most of the stuff on here looks uh, really untidy and but that's kind of the nature of a test stand because they're constantly being morphed from one engine to the next you know whatever it is the project you have to do that should pretty much we'll, we'll go from here and we'll head out to the test site start the engine up and we'll give you more information you'll get to see the computers and the digital information on the computers as well as the analog information on the instrument panel we're going to do run-ups from a startup this time which everybody has pointed out that they need to see badly so we're going to do that and we're going to do different power settings and you'll get to see really what an Allison does at different power settings the torque points of curiosity if if that's what uh, you, you know have a burning desire to know